Now, I, I don't know much about architecture. And to be perfectly honest, outside of a Ken Burns film, I don't know much about Frank Lloyd Wright. I'm just kind of one of those people who likes what I like. In the words of Popeye, maybe? But recently I was in the Pittsburgh area and I decided to visit a few of the Frank Lloyd Wright sites. First off was Kentuck Knob, which I incorrectly called several times Kentucky Knob and was corrected each and every time. I did an hour long tour and it was really informative and really cool to see. Something about these spaces just puts you in the, the right frame of mind. All the details are, you know, very Frank Lloyd Wright-esque. And it was a fun, quick tour they didn't allow photos or videos inside the house, so I just took some from the outside. But it was a quick trip done early in the morning, and it was right before my trip to Falling Water later that afternoon. Now, Falling Water was a more detailed tour. I think it was still about an hour and a half. You saw both the guest house and the main house. Now, they didn't let you do video and stuff like that inside the house but they were allowing pictures in certain areas of the house, so that's what I'll show here. It's just one of those places that just doesn't feel real. You know what I mean? Like, it feels like this wasn't a house. This was always intended to be a museum, but the fact that somebody actually got to live here for a number of years, and, you know, a house like this that just couldn't exist in modern world, you know, be it the codes or the design, or putting a house near a stream. But, you know, you couldn't create this house in 2024. So to see something like this that's still up and still exists and you can still visit it is really cool. And I know there's people out there that would, you know, give up an arm to live near a river like this. And it's just so cool to see the design and how it kind of pushed into the landscape and all the natural surroundings around it. It's one of those like bucket list items that like I think everybody in the world at some point needs to go visit Falling Water. It's just a sight to see and something truly unique. And you get this weird feeling that you really can't explain. As you can probably tell listening to this video, I'm struggling to kind of explain why it was so cool and why it was so impressive. But you really, you really need to be there in order to feel it. It's, it's so interesting and so unique to that place. These are a couple inside shots that we were allowed to take on the, the first floor. I think as you went up further and further, you weren't allowed to take photos and stuff like that. So this is all pretty much on the, the first level of the house. And the photo there is the guy who actually designed the, uh, or paid for the design for the house. I just love all the colors and they try to like kind of keep it in the time frame it was designed in. And so many of these Frank Lloyd Wright houses have those like early 70s, late 60s kind of green and orange and brown. And it just, it looks very, it's like, it's like pulled right out of Mad Men. I just love how the lighting looked and how like, it almost seemed like most of the lights were hidden. And you couldn't even see it. It was really interesting. And I know, you know, you can do that stuff with LEDs and stuff, but you were talking about all incandescent bulbs back then. So, like, that's a pretty cool feat that they were able to do stuff like that without, you know, these LED strips that you can just stick to a wall nowadays. And lastly was the, you know, probably the most famous shot of Falling Water, the one that I'm familiar with and I would guess most people are familiar with. And the last location I went to was Polymath Park. It's uh, four Frank Lloyd Wright style homes. There's two that were designed by one of his apprentices, uh, apprentices, apprentices. 
and two that were designed by him. And it was a really cool tour. It was it was two hours long, but it, it really flies by. It was probably, you know, you probably spent 30 minutes at, at each house. And the guy who was our tour guide, the guy in the checkered shirt there, very informative, knew everything about the houses, uh, gave us a lot of information. And what's cool about these is you can actually stay in these houses, uh, which is something I considered. It's just, it was super expensive and I was kind of passing through for work at the time. And I don't think they would have approved that. <laughs> But like even the the kitchenware and you know the pots and pans that are hanging just all look so cool. I know those are probably not original. This house in particular was was interesting to me. It was they actually have uh, forced heating and forced air, um, which is unlike most of the other Frank Lloyd Wright houses, uh, from my understanding. And they kind of saved the uh, the best house for last, and it was uh, the largest house of them all here, and. It was very interesting. I, I, I love the red flooring. I love all the, the masonry and the concrete. And these houses, a number of them were actually removed from their current, their original locations to this Polymath Park. Well, that's all for this video. If you liked it, beat the out of the like button and we'll see you next time.